Hi, Naisha. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. Tell me something about yourself. Yes. Hi, I'm Naisha. And I love sports. I have got gold in archery and now I want gold in maths. So that's why I'm here with Anisa. And I'm sure I will get gold in maths also with Anisa. Good. You are a confident girl and what do you think will happen? So that's what I believe in. And since you are a sports person, I'm sure you understand the significance of a coach and a guide. And for me, it's a privilege to teach you and help you get another goal this time in mathematics. Yes. So we went through some drills, I should say, warm up with polynomials, correct? Yes. And how do we divide polynomials? Yes. Today, we'll actually learn the division of polynomials using long division method. Perfect? Yes. So, Naisha, you are in which grade? And can you share with me some examples which you are doing? Yes, I'm in grade eight. eight. Um, yes, now I'll share my screen. Sure. All right. We'll start from the very basics. Let's get the basics clear about yes. long division first, right? In primary school, you did this long division. Let's take an example. Let's divide seven by five. These are my favorite numbers. They are odd numbers and they are wonderful numbers. Five goes one time in seven. And you have five here. And when you take away, you get two, correct? So yes. basically, this particular division can be written in a couple of ways. We can write seven is equal to what? Seven is five times one plus two, correct? We could also write the same statement as what we did. 7, we are dividing by 5, and what we get is 1 plus 2 remains to be divided, and so it is 2 over 5. Is that correct? Yes, we did this one. Yes, and now this can be written as division statement. Now, this is the division statement, and that's the multiplication form of the same thing. If you multiply by 5, that's what you get, right? So, that is the multiplication form. So, sometimes we do say, like, multiplication form of the division statement, right? Now, we have some terms here. Let's give names, the technical names to all these terms. So, what is this called? Quotient. And here? Divisor. The number seven itself? Dividend. And what remains is the? Remainder. Is the remainder. So whenever you divide, you do get a remainder, right? So if the remainder is zero, then it could be zero also, right? So in the numbers, in arithmetic, remainder is always a number, right? So this is what you did in arithmetic, right? Yes. We are talking just about numbers, correct? Yes. Now, in this case, the remainder could be anything greater than equal to zero, right? Or negative, right? So remainder could be one. Remainder B, yeah? Okay. Now... It's very important to understand that if remainder is 1, then it is a factor, right? So let me just go to the next page, clear this up, and give you some more concepts. Now, if I divide, let us say, if I'm dividing 10 by 5, it goes 2 times, and the remainder is 0, right? Yes. So 0 remainder means what? Uh, that 5 is the factor of 10. 5 is factor of so that is the meaning of factor, right? And we do say 5 and 2 are multiples, and 10 is the product. Is if 5 is a factor, 10 is the product, correct? So either way, they are related, right? So 5 times 
2 is equal to 10, or we could say 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So again, I have written the same multiplication statement or the division statement, you may say. Is that clear to you? Yes. Now, we are going to move on to polynomial divisions, right? So in polynomial division, we just have, just not have numbers, we could have some variables also. For example, we could have something like 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, for example. Is that clear to you? And we may divide this by something, say, x. Correct? So if I divide this with x, what do I get? And how do I divide? Well, the first term we have to take first. Now, this particular term, as you can see, has 2x squared. So, what goes in the quotient is 2 times x. So, when I multiply 2 times x, then what do I get? I get 2x squared. And therefore, yes. for me, the remainder here is 0. Now, I bring down the next term, which is 3x, correct? Minus 3x. Now, I have to multiply x with something. And obviously, that has to be minus 3. So if I multiply by minus 3, I get minus 3x. And again, the remainder is 0. Then I bring down the number, which is 2. We need not write plus here. What we may write. Now, when I get 2, can I divide 2 by x? I cannot. So that remains. So that is my remainder. Do you see that? Yes. So therefore, now I can write down the statement as 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x is basically equal to quotient, which is 2x minus 3, minus 3. plus remainder, which is 2, which we still need to divide by x. Is that clear to you? Yes. So in this case, clearly, we have quotient, which I'm going to write with q, quotient is 2x minus 3, and the remainder is 2. Is that clear to you? Yes. Now let's complicate this a bit. Let me clear this. And now this time we have something like 2x squared minus 4x plus 10. And we are going to divide this by 2x minus 1. Let us see. Okay? Yeah. So if I do 2x minus 1, then I am dividing this trinomial. This is a trinomial, correct? Okay? You know what polynomials are. This is a trinomial, which is being divided by a polynomial, uh, which is of the order 2 binomial. So I have to engage two terms, right? So I have to see what happens. How many times will this go into 2x squared minus 4x? So the first number, which we have to take care of, is because of 2x and 2x squared. So what should come? When you divide 2x squared by 2x, it is x, right? So we'll put x here. Multiplying with x, we get 2x squared minus x, correct? And now let's subtract this. And when you subtract minus 4x minus x, what do you get? Tell me. Oh, on the, on the case for 2x squared, we get 0. And your minus 4. Minus or minus. So we have to subtract minus x, correct? Yes. So you get minus 3x, right? Subtracting minus x. You get the idea? And yes. now you bring down the next term, which is 10. Now you have minus 3x here. What should you multiply? 2x so that you get minus 3x. So that is difficult to figure out, correct? You yes. can do it on the side. So you have minus 3x, and you have to divide this by 2x. So of course, we get x and x cancel, and you get minus 3 by 2, correct? Yes. So you have to multiply by minus 3 by 2. Do you understand? Yes. Now, minus 3 by 2 times 2x, you know, is minus 3x. That is why you multiplied it by this number, correct? Yes. And now when you multiply minus 3 by 2 with minus 1, minus and minus gives you a positive sign. And 3 by 2 times 1 is 3 by 2, correct? Now this, of course, is 0. But how much is this? Let's figure this out on the side. So initially, you might do it on the side. We have 10 
we are subtracting 3 by 2. Of course, the common denominator could be 2. So it is 20 minus 3 and 20 minus 3 is 17, right? Right. Over 2. So this is what you get, 17 over 2. Is that clear to you? Yes. So we have all of a sudden taken fractions in our solution. Now you understand your question involved a lot of fractions with higher degree. But let us understand the basics first, correct? Is this process clear to you? Yes. Now, can you tell me here, what is the quotient and what is the remainder? So, your quotient in this case is what? X minus 3 upon 2. And the remainder is? Plus 17 upon 2. All right. So, that is what you get from this particular question. And this is the long division process. Is there any doubt? No. Correct. Right. So we have divided a trinomial of degree 2 with a binomial of degree 1, a linear equation, right? With a quadratic equation. Correct? Let's clear the screen and let's go higher degree this time. Correct? So let me take a question from another book. It is similar, just, just that, well, it 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 8x minus 12. This question is from a grade 12 book, okay? I'm not joking, okay? I have copied the question from grade 12 book for you. You are in grade 8, okay? Now, you are going to help me. How do I divide this polynomial, which is of degree 3? Now, do you understand what degree is? Highest power of x, correct? Yes. And also remember, when we divide, we have to write them in proper order. Do you understand? Yes. Proper order means highest degree to lowest degree, right? In decreasing order of degrees. Now, we have to take care of the very first term, which is, so there are two terms. So definitely we have to divide two terms at a time. And we have to look into the first term, not 2x cubed divided by x. What should come in the quotient? Um, 2x. 2x squared, right? Yes. How do you figure this out? You're right on the uh, side. 2x Just two. a second. Why yes. don't you write 2x squared, not 2x? See, 2x cubed divided by x is how much? Do it on the side. So you get 2x squared. Do you see that? Can you see this yes. part of the screen? Yes. That okay. is how you get your quotient. Clear? Because you have to get rid of the first number. One by one, we will evenly divide all the terms. Is that okay? Yes. So, we, when we multiply 2x squared with x, you get 2x cubed here, minus yes. 1 times this will give me 2x squared, correct? Yes. Now, let's take away. So, when you take away, what do you get? Uh, in the column of 2x cubed, you get 0, and here... Yeah. We'll get one minus x squared. So x squared. no need to write one minus x squared. Correct. And now you bring down 8x. So when you bring down 8x, we now need to divide x minus x squared plus 8x with x minus 1. So in that case, what should go in the quotient? Tell me. 4x. No, x squared divided by, you will see x squared divided by x, correct? We have to take care of this term now, right? Yes. And that is x. It is minus, so therefore we have to put minus, right? So minus x. So yes. that will give us minus x squared plus x. And now we will take away this also. What do we get? Um, x, x squared minus x squared, we get uh, 0. Plus 8x uh, plus minus x because we do subtraction is 8. 7x because from 8x you are subtracting x, correct? Yes, bring down the next term which is minus 12. Yes, and so we have to now figure out how much will come in the quotient. 7x now is to be divided by x, correct? Yes. So, what should come in the numerator? I mean, the quotient. 
seven x divided by x is seven. So seven will be plus seven. And when I write plus seven here, I get seven x plus seven times minus one is minus seven. And now we have to take away. So when we take away, what do we get? Seven oh, x minus seven is zero, and here we will get minus five. Perfect. So that is the process. So now you can write down what is the quotient for you. Two x square minus x plus seven. And what is the remainder? Minus five. Absolutely clear. Correct. Yes. You have understood the process. Now let us see how can we slightly refine our process. Since these zeros always come, we normally do not write these zeros. Is that okay? Yes. Just as we do not write one x. Is that okay? okay? So we will not be writing zeros as we move along. But that is how we are going to look at. It. Is that clear to you? Let yes. me take another example. Let me clear the screen now. Okay. So another example. Let me copy from grade 12 book, right? So I'm actually copying questions from grade 12 book. Uh, now this time, the, the question here is, x cubed plus 7x squared plus 14x plus 8. And we are going to divide this by x plus 2. Is it okay? Yes. Now tell me, how are you going to divide this? How many terms should you consider? First x plus terms. two. First two terms. What will come in the quotient? First, we will write x squared. And multiply right down. So what do we get here? Um, you will get x squared. And take away. Tell me, what do you get? Plus plus minus. So uh, we get seven. 5x squared. Bring down the next term. Plus 14x. What will come in the quotient? Mm -hmm. x and 5x squared. When you divide, you need 5x, correct? Yes. So you can do it on the side sometimes. If it is difficult, think like this, right? So this x cancels. And we have 5x. Remaining. 5x. So when you multiply, you get, of course, 5x squared. And multiply 5x with 2, you get 10x. 10x. Now you, again, subtract and bring yeah. down the next term. What do you get? 4x. 4x. 4x plus 8. And now you have to divide. What should you put on the quotient? 4x divided by x Four. is 4. Four. So you get 4x plus 8. Is that okay? Yes. Zero remainder. Do you see that? So I've yes. taken this question with a purpose that we could get zero remainder also when we are dividing polynomials. Correct? What does that mean to you? Can you explain your answer? Like, uh, should I explain the sum? No. Well, getting zero remainder in division means what? How does that relate the divisor and that, the division? Uh, the divisor and the, uh, the the divisor is the factor of the dividend. Correct. Then is factor of x cube plus seven x square plus fourteen x plus eight. Is that clear to you? Correct. Yes. That is what it is. And in this particular question, the quotient is quotient is x square x plus five x plus four. And the remainder is zero. You get the idea. Yes. So we say that x plus 2 is a factor. So the important word which you've learned here is factor. You remember factoring which you did earlier? So yes. x plus 2 is a factor. And that is your remainder. Correct? Yes. Correct. So that is how you are going to do it. Now, can we take up the difficult question which you shared with me from your book? So I'll stop. Can you read the question? Oh, okay, let me. Uh, we'll do it in your book. That'll be it. So share the book. I've stopped sharing this. Please share your book now, and we'll do that particular question. Yes. Can you see the screen? Uh, yes, yeah, loading up. Perfect. Okay. So we have this uh, 
question, let me rewrite you, which is, yeah, you reduce a bit, reduce a bit more if you can. This is okay. Okay, that, this is it. Oh, very good, very good. This is it. So the question here is, we have to divide, we have to divide 4x to the power of 4 minus 5x cube minus 7 plus 1. 7x plus 1, right? Now here, we have to divide this with, we have to divide this by another term, which is 4x minus 1. Is it okay? Yes. Now here, what do you notice here is that when we're looking into these powers, let's try to understand. We have the power degree 4, 3, 2 is missing, right? Yes. So we have to use placeholder when something is missing. So let me write down a placeholder here. So I'll write down this question as 4x to the power of 4 minus 5x cubed. Square term is missing. So I'll write plus 0x squared. Is that clear to you? And then we have minus 7x plus 1. And we are going to divide this by 4x minus 1. Is that clear? Yes. So we have used a placeholder. Now, yes. let's perform the division operation. Since there are two terms in the divisor, we will engage two terms in the dividend. 4x to the power of 4 is to be divided by 4x. So what should go there? So you can think like this. 4x to the power of 4 is to be divided by 4x. So 4 and 4 cancel and you get x cubed. Is it okay? Yes. So we'll write x cubed here. Multiply x cubed with 4x minus 1. So you get 4x to the power of 4 minus x cubed. Correct? Right. And now we are going to take the difference. And the difference between them can be written as what? Minus 5x cubed minus x cubed will give us minus 4x cubed. Correct? Bring down 0x squared. Yes. Now, we have minus 4x cubed. So, minus 4x cubed. When you divide by 4x, you get what? 4 and 4 cancel. You get minus x squared. Correct? Yes. So, we are going to put here minus x squared. Let me use a, because the red will mix up. So, let me use a green itself. Okay. So we are putting here minus x squared. So multiplying with minus x squared, I get minus 4x cubed and minus and minus becomes plus and we get x squared here. And now we'll again find the difference. 0x squared minus x squared will give me minus x squared. X squared. And I'll bring down the term minus 7x. Seven seven now minus x squared divided by 4x is what? Oh. x and x cancel yes. minus x over 4. Do you see that fraction? Yes. So that fraction is going to come in the quotient and we'll write this as minus x by 4. Is this part clear? So this is the part which was confusing you, right? Yes. When we multiply minus x by 4 by the first term, we'll definitely get minus x squared because 1 by 4 and 4 cancels. Negative gives me the negative sign. x times x is x squared. Is that clear to you? Yes. When you multiply minus x by 4 by minus 1, minus and minus gives me plus and we get x over 4. Four. Now you have to subtract these rational, we call them rational uh, expressions. So now rational expressions minus 7x, we are doing, let me write down here. Okay, so we are doing minus 7x and we are taking away x by 4. So of course 4 is common and so multiplying 4 with minus 7 gives me minus 28x minus x. Minus 28x minus 20 minus x is minus 29x. And so that is my remainder. So the remainder here is, let me write this in red ink. 
is minus 29 x upon 4. x upon 4. Now, the next term is plus 1. So I'm going to get plus 1 also here. Now, what should get into the quotient? We have 4x, which will divide into minus 29x over 4, correct? Yes. So, so we are going to divide minus 29x over 4 by 4x. So I'll write times 4x in the denominator itself. Do you see that? Dividing by 4x, right? Means multiplying by 1 over 4x, correct? Is this clear to you? Uh, not. Can you explain it again? Yes. The last part, just the last part. So we have to divide minus 29 over 4, 29x over 4 by 4x, correct? Is yes. it okay? So this is minus 29x by 4 and then times 4x. Is it okay? Yes. So now, you can see from here, x and x cancel, and we get minus 29 over 16. Correct? Therefore, the term which comes in the quotient will be minus 29 over 16. When you multiply this with 4x, you should get minus 29 over 4x, since we did this multiplication here, correct? Yes. When you multiply this with minus 1, you get plus, because minus and minus is plus 29 over 16, correct? Yes. And now you have to find the remainder. So to find the remainder, what will you do? You will take away 29 over 16, from 1. So you have to do 1 minus 29 over 16, correct? Yes. So take 16 common denominator and 16 times 1 is 16, 16 minus 29. Oh, nine. Sorry, 29, right? So what is 16 minus 29? Tell me. 16 minus 29, just a second. Yes. 16 minus 29 is uh, not 13. Minus, because the minus 13 will come, right? Minus 13 over 16, correct? So that yes. becomes my remainder. Is this whole process clear to you? Yes. Okay, so let's write down. What is the quotient for us? So, the so, so the quotient, quotient is equal to x cubed. Yeah, tell me. X cubed. Minus x cubed. Yeah. Minus x upon 4. Correct. Minus 29 upon 16. And what is the remainder? The remainder is minus 13 upon 16. Is this clear to you? Yes. Now, Naisha, this is the ultimate question and also the last question of the examples which you shared with me. The method which has been adopted in the book is actually very difficult even for me to understand, right? And therefore, I am introducing to you long division in a simplified manner as shown here, correct? Yes. Can you please explain me all the steps which I have done here? How did we approach and how did we solve? So we are dividing what with what, please explain and how we divided. Yes, I will explain. Uh, first, we took the first two digit, uh, digits because uh, in, uh, in the divisor we have two digits. Right. And then in the quotient, we put x cubed. Yeah. And here we put 4x raised to 4. And then we got the answer as 0. And down we put x cubed. And then we got the answer as 4x cubed. Then we wrote x squared minus x squared. And we got the answer as minus x minus 4 x cube and uh, yes so what we really did when we started the question we noted that there was a term which was missing sex yes. squared term was placeholder. missing so we have introduced that as a placeholder see because of this placeholder there is a perfect alignment do you see that if you do yes. not put this here will be minus seven x you will get confused now what to do correct yes so therefore the placeholder has a very important role 
So we place this placeholder and now we follow the long division standard process. Yes, the yes, difficulty yes. really comes, Naisha, when we are landing with fractions, correct? Yes. So at this stage and there onwards, we have fractions involved. So that becomes very difficult. So when the fractions get more involved, it is a good practice to do this work on the side. Do you see this widget or on the side? Yes, and to figure do. out what will come in the quotient and what will come in the remainder. Correct? Yes. So then you have a rough work column. We say RWC to look into your work and then place it on the division itself. Is that clear to you? Yes. So we are going to end our class today at this particular stage. So once again, I thank you a lot and I hope that you have understood the process, right? Yes. So yes. now we will, uh, okay, can you stop sharing the screen? We'll discuss the final outcome. Okay, yes. great. So, Naisha, what did you learn today? Can you summarize your learning? Oh, yes, I uh, we cleared our doubts today with the fractions and placeholders. Then uh, today I learned 12th grade sums, which were uh, quite uh, easy with you solving with me. And then we learned that how to divide a binomial with a trinomial. Yes. And yeah. how to put fractions in the sums. Right. So we actually, the last example which we took from your book was a degree four polynomial, right? Yes. And we divided that with a binomial, linear binomial of degree one. And that involved fractions in the quotient as well as in the remainder. And I hope you have understood that. So I'd like yes. you to now practice from your book. You have very difficult questions in your book. Follow the process which we have learned today. And in case there is any difficulty, feel free to send an email to me or just WhatsApp. Okay. So you could do any of these two things. I'll get back to you and we'll continue learning. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. And bye. Thank you. So.